what? Sarcopenic obesity in children and adolescents? This is Dr. Jeetan Bendor for Physician Perspectives. Welcome. I had defined sarcopenic obesity in another episode. I will put the link to that episode in the description below. So sarcopenic obesity, sarcopenia and obesity is, and is characterized by the combination of obesity defined by high body fat percentage and sarcopenia defined as low skeletal muscle mass accompanied by low muscle function. Now, sarcopenic obesity needs to be considered as a unique clinical condition, differently from obesity or sarcopenia alone. And that is because of the existence of two important things. One is a bidirectional pathogenic interaction between body fat accumulation or fat mass accumulation and loss of skeletal muscle mass and function. And the second thing is a negative clinical interactions between obesity and sarcopenia, leading to a synergistically higher risk for metabolic disease and functional impairment compared to those caused by the cumulative risk from each separate condition. Now, sarcopenic obesity is not really new. It was first described in 1996. Yet, in even in 2022, look at this paper, Sarcopenic Obesity, a hot yet under-considered evolving concept, becomes a challenge, isn't it? Uh, so when you look at the prevalence of sarcopenic obesity, it varies broadly between studies, depending on population characteristics, such as, such as age, gender, race and ethnicity, and different definitions. We are still struggling to com come to a conclusion about how to really define sarcopenia generally. Okay? Now, if you look at all these studies together, whatever has been published with the you know, different definitions or whatever, its average prevalence in older adults ranges between 5 and 10 percent and is similar between men and women. I seriously think this is an under-reported uh, 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 condition. So sarcopenic obesity is estimated to affect 100 to 200 million people in the next 35 years. Yet, we still consider sarcopenic obesity as a relatively new term and as a clinical condition that primarily affects older adults. So now here is a paper published recently in 2022 looking at sarcopenic obesity in children and adolescents. Right? And according to the WHO, over 340 million children and adolescents aged 5 to 19 were overweight in 2016, we are in 2022 and despite the implementation of various obesity prevention programs, the prevalence of overweight and obesity among children and adolescents is rising on each of the continents. So the, the, we need to discuss this in more detail because we know that ch childhood obesity can cause so many challenges in our, in our adolescents and children. Insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes mellitus in adolescents, elevated blood pressure, dyslipidemia, NAFLD, and we'll now we're seeing lean NAFLD in, in our adolescents, obstructive sleep apnea, and psychological challenges. So we should be addressing this uh, sarcopenic obesity in children. And sarcopenia and obese, so sarcopenic obesity were once considered as an affliction that only affects the elderly. So now we look, need to look into the children, the another sphere altogether, and combine the two younger uh, children, younger adults, adolescents, younger adults, and the elderly, because it's affecting pretty much the entire range of our population. Even though there is no established consensus regarding sarcopenic obesity definition, diagnostic methods, and age and gender specific cutoff points in children and adolescents, these authors have actually looked into what is available online and put together a systematic review. So they reviewed data on sarcopenic obesity definition, prevalence, and adverse outcomes in the pediatric population. They looked at, they had a methodology and a total of 18 articles were retrieved from online databases. So overall, there was a wide heterogeneity 
in the methods and thresholds used to define sarcopenic obesity in children and adolescents. Here is a table that was presented, or tables rather, that were presented in the review. I understand that this image is very tiny, but they do look at this, this column here shows the prevalence of sarcopenic obesity in children and adolescents over the past few years. Of the various studies, there were eight studies that evaluated outcomes related to sarcopenic obesity and all showed a significant association of sarcopenic obesity in children and adolescents with, with car uh, cardiometabolic outcomes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease severity, inflammation and mental health. This is the challenge. Now, if you look at the prevalence of sarcopenic obesity in children and adolescents, here's the, here's the challenge. Look at the range. 5.66 to 69.7 in girls, 7.2 to 81.3 percent in boys. So it really depends on what definition one uses until we really, you know, converge and make these decisions. We are going to have these ranges and debates. So in conclusion, the authors conclude that this review found that sarcopenic obesity is highly prevalent in children and adolescents with and is associated with various adverse health outcomes. And they go on to say that the review highlight shows the need for the development of a consensus regarding definition, standardization of evaluation methodologies and age and gender thresholds for sarcopenic obesity for different ethnicities in the pediatric population. This is a real challenge, ladies and gentlemen, and we need to look at this very, very carefully and with urgency. So I had presented this paper earlier. Descri I'll put the link in the description of the emergence of three waves of aging, depending on the proteins that can be uh, identified at these three different age points at 34, 60 and 78 years. So basically, you don't wake up early morning one day when you're 60 and you're old. It happens earlier. So then I presented this photograph or this image showing that based on the 34, 60 and 78 years that aging or decl declining in mobility starts earlier. Then I presented a data or presented a paper with data showing that children of even 10 years are having challenges with skeletal muscle strength. Now, we need to pull it back even further because we are looking at sarcopenic obesity in children of even 5 onwards. And, and this lays a foundation for a problem with declining mobility and the challenges that sarcopenic obesity brings along with it. We certainly will have to look into the, these relative rates of functional decline and look at the declining of organ specific physiological functions i'm certainly going to put this pull this rather muscular skeletal challenges that we have to an earlier period which will naturally pull the other physiological challenges to an earlier period and definitely not consider sarcopenic obesity as an under considered evolving topic concept but it is already here thank you